I live on Anderson Island, and uh, we're up on the, uh, right on the edge of a 160-foot cliff above the water. And I have an unobstructed view of uh, uh, at least 180 degrees from my uh, viewpoint. And all of a sudden, I, I saw this object coming from the northeast. Uh, do you know where Ketron Island is? Yes. Oh, okay. It was coming from Ketron Island uh-huh. along that shore, which is belongs to it's a, a it's Port Louis Reservation, you know? Yes. It was way out over there by that shore, and it was coming down the sound at a, a, at a fast clip. And this was a, a half-moon object, not a flying saucer type. Yes. But it was half moon, and it was it was quite thick in the in the front part of it, you know. Yes. In other words, it was half moon, and it just uh, it was going that dra- uh, forward in that direction, and it was just skimming on top of the water, and it dove into the water. Sure, we got disconnected. Yeah, I guess we did. <laughs> <laughs> I was going through all this program. I'll try to start all over again. Uh, it was coming from the Ketron Island area along the far shore, and I could see everything clear beyond uh, the Squally Flats. You know yes. what that is? Uh-huh. Okay. It came along, and it probably was about even with DuPont when it dove into the water. You know where DuPont is? Not, I don't think so. Well, it's DuPont is right across from where I live. Okay. Okay. And I live on Cold Point, Anderson Island. Right. When it got just about to DuPont, it dove into the water and left a big foam spray-like deal when it went into the water. Yes. And it had disappeared. And I kept looking and wondering what the heck it was, you know, and pretty soon... Oh, maybe uh, have a six seconds or so. It surfaced again and was skimmed on top of the water, uh, oh, about a hundred feet above the water, and it continued on for quite a ways. And then when it got to approximately, even with the squally flats, it dove into the water again. And I lost, I couldn't see it again after that. If it came up again, I don't know. Uh-huh. It disappeared, and I couldn't see any beyond that point. That's what it, uh, that's my version of the whole thing. I see. What would, approximate, what was the time lapse from the time you first saw it till it just disappeared the last time? Oh, it was uh, about, uh, not over two minutes. Uh-huh. Very, it was very fast. It was moving at quite a speed. And uh, it just, it was the darnest thing I ever saw in my life. I can't, I just was really, I, I always keep binoculars uh, right by the window. And we are leaving for uh, Mexico for three months in a couple of days. And we had loaded them in our motorhome. Uh-huh. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I might have got a better view of it for, with our binoculars. But it was very clear. and. It was very, there was no, uh, there was any doubt about what I saw. Yes. Well, now, your side of the island, is that facing west, or I mean east? No, uh, facing south. South, due south. Due south. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the weather was fairly good then? Yes, the weather was clear. Uh-huh. And the water was smooth. There, was, there wasn't a ripple on the water. It was just like glass. Yes. Now, you were observing this from indoors? From indoors, yes. I see. No, we, we have uh, 16 feet of glass here uh-huh. and uh, on the front of our home. And we have, uh, like I say, unobstructed view for at least 180 degrees. I see. Were there any ships or boats on the water at the time? Not at the time. There wasn't a boat or ship in sight. And shortly after that, there was a lot of boats. I see. But... Uh, where they were at this time, I, I can't figure it out, but at, right after that, there was more boats than I've seen since last summer. I see. Well, then somebody in authority probably heard about that also and sent boats out. Yes, there was a lot of boats. <clears throat> a lot of boats. It just seemed like they just were swarming after, 
shortly after that. Would that be in the area where this thing finally went into the water and didn't come out again? Yes. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, do you know where the, well, where the Spali Flats are in uh, the point, uh, the south, southern point of Anderson Island is? Uh, yes, I know of the island, yes. Well, there was, uh, I heard friends of mine, there were, they go fishing a lot, they said there was probably 50 boats out there uh, later after that. Uh-huh. But they were all fishing, of course. Yes. They were looking for what I saw. Yes. Now, I want to get a confirmation of the date. Was that Sunday morning or Monday morning? No, that was Saturday. Saturday morning, the Saturday. 18th. Saturday morning. Okay. Yeah, the 18th at 8.30, exactly 8.30 in the morning. My wife uh, wasn't up yet. Uh, I hollered at her, but she could, by the time she got there, well, it was, of course, gone. And of course, you have you heard any discussion among your friends or neighbors about seeing it at all? No, uh, I told my I wasn't even going to report because I figured that people wouldn't believe me anyway. So, uh-huh. and uh, but uh, some of our friends said I should report it, and that's how come I reported it. I see. Uh-huh. It was really, it was really <laughs> quite. <laughs> exciting or whatever you want to call it. Yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> Did you notice any aircraft in the area later? Uh, no, I we didn't have any aircraft in the area at the time or or afterwards uh-huh. at all. No. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't an airplane because it was a big object. I'd say it was, uh, oh, maybe in front of it was 75 feet long uh, in this half moon. Yes. Deal. And it was, uh, uh, was <laughs> just, just, uh, big and moving at a terrific speed. And how it could dive in the water and then surface again, I, it just was uh, quite puzzling to me. <laughs> yes. Did you see any surface features or openings or lights or anything on this object? No, it was, uh, it was a white gray, uh, uh, color kind of a white grayish color yes. and I saw no openings on it of course it was it's about uh, I imagine from my home across to the other side is probably about two miles I see so I couldn't see any windows or anything if there was such a thing in it uh-huh. no electrical interference in your area that you noticed well I didn't notice any at that time I didn't have the radio on yes. or anything uh, although, oh, you talked about discussion, uh, some friends of mine said that uh, a day or two before that, that there was some other sightings around uh, the narrow bridge. Now, I didn't, I don't know whether that's so or not, and that people said that, uh, friends of mine said that, uh, you know, you're way of radio communication they could they couldn't get the radios to work for about 10 minutes yes we we heard about that report yeah yes that was another very large object yeah uh-huh and that was uh the next day i believe after this happened uh-huh. that i what i saw see and it was <laughs> oh well what was that oh well, my wife said no that was just after christmas uh, i might have that that mixed up, I think. But uh, what I saw, I know I saw, and it was there. Uh-huh. There was no uh, imagination, because I'm not the type that imagines things. I've been a pilot for uh, 40 some years, 46, 48 years, and a uh, commercial pilot, and I flew for the uh, Air Force during World War II, and I uh, logged over 17,000 hours. Uh, without, uh, uh, that is, during the war. Yes. And uh, I haven't logged out. I haven't paid any attention to hours I've had since then or be- before then even. And I've been flying many years. And I've never seen anything like this before. I'd say you were a highly qualified observer then. Well, I, I, I would say I am, yeah. <laughs>